I think uh, there's a lot of individuals, so there's lots of different topics. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think moving forward is the biggest generation that, or the biggest issue that we will inherit as a generation? Um, well, I think one of them is our, our federal debt. Uh, we have a spending problem in Washington. Uh, so we're, uh, we, uh, I know in our homes, uh, we have to balance our checkbooks every month. Uh, the federal government hasn't been doing that. Uh, this is why uh, one of the clear marching orders I have on behalf of Montana is to bring fiscal responsibility uh, to D.C. Um, but uh, we have, as a Congress, we haven't figured that out yet. Um, I guess we already kind of did that one. So what legislation have you personally or do you know of that has been put forward to really take care of teenagers? Because we are... We are the future, so what is directly going to impact us right now? Well, I'm working on a couple of things now. One, I was very uh, uh, pleased this Congress, I got on the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, and I serve on three subcommittees. One is the Telecommunications Subcommittee. Uh, and one of the things to help Montanan teens and all Montanans prosper is rural broadband, because this gives us access to the world to start a business, start e-commerce, or maybe get a job in Denver, but live in Livingston. So this telecommunications subcommittee focuses, one of my priorities, is rural broadband and making sure that's available in our community. So that's important. I also serve on the healthcare subcommittee. And one of the concerns there as I travel the state is how much healthcare costs. So I had a bill uh, two weeks ago that came out of committee that I helped introduce, which will actually reduce prescription drug costs. Uh, so uh, this is, as you go from high school into the working world, um, these expenses become a, a part of the weight that's in your backpack that you got to carry around, and uh, they get in the way of people prospering. Uh, and uh, as I talk to teens, they're concerned about their future um, and providing an environment where there's lots of opportunities and people can succeed and uh, the government doesn't place undue burdens on you. And do you think that the net neutrality movement that has been um, coming up has really affected the piece of legislation that you want to work on? Or? Well, um, so I, I, my professional life was in the internet world. We started a business in Bozeman. It grew to 1,100 employees. We were one of the top 100 websites in the world. So the internet succeeded uh, with a very light touch regulation. And we all agree we want a free and open internet. Um, the the uh, Unfortunately, some of the rules that were put in place actually stifled the growth of rural broadband. In fact, we had one uh, broadband provider come into our committee and tell us that under those Obama-era regulations on the internet, they could not get a bank loan to put in rural broadband. So um, the light touch regulations, which gave birth to Facebook and Amazon and Google and all the internet properties that we love, including our company right now, Technologies in Bozeman and Printing for Less here in Livingston, were all constructed under those light touch regulations. It was these additional regulations that slowed the growth of the internet and placed higher burden. So uh, I'm pleased that the current administration has gone back to the rules that allow the internet to prosper. But we all agree we need a free and open internet um, and I'll keep working to make sure that happens. Um, so with the increase in school shootings, it's an undeniable trend. What do you think can be done at a federal level? What can be done at a state level? And what can be done at a local level? Yeah, so that, that's a really important question. I was in a number of schools in Montana right after the whole Parkland shootings that we had in Florida, and uh, we all need I mean, we, we must have safer schools. Um, the, uh, and I personally don't believe there's any one rule Congress can pass 2,000 miles away to make our schools safer if the communities don't come together and uh, work together to help troubled individuals get the assistance they need. In the particular case of Parkland, um, Everyone knew something was gonna happen. The police had been to this individual's home over 20 times. The federal government had been notified twice 
warning that this was a potential school shooter, and no one did anything. There was a situation here in Montana, down in Ravalli County, where someone made an online threat against the school. The sheriff went, apprehended the individual, and got them the help they need, but also took them off the streets so people were safe again. So my advice locally is if you see something, say something. Um, let's help these young people get help that they need. Um, and uh, I think that's the path forward to have safer schools. So in the Montana legislation, we just passed two bills that are headed towards the governor's office. Um, one that basically changes where you can spend school safety money and directs that towards mental health. Mm -hmm. And the other that allows schools to hire a marshal mm -hmm. that would have a concealed carry permit. Do you mm -hmm. feel that there's one way that works better than the other or do you think that this is a good solution? Uh, I, I would be supportive of both of those. I think that uh, schools have to be able to take the steps to make sure they're safe. And all of the uh, shootings that we've seen have occurred in areas that have been designated gun-free zones. And honestly, it, it, it creates a softer target for people that want to commit a crime. Um, so having someone there to defend and protect, I think makes sense. And there's no question we need to invest more in mental health services to help uh, people get healthy again. In Montana, um, obviously, we lead the nation in suicide rates, mm -hmm. and this county is, the, if not the top county for suicide rates. Um, what, like, what should be done about that to lower the rates? Because in past years, it's just been climbing. Mm -hmm. And you're right, this is a tragic situation, particularly the suicide rates amongst veterans. These young men and women go serve their country, come home, and they're faced with a future that's not as bright as they'd like, and, and they're not healthy. They're not healthy. Um, we need to provide uh, services and make sure we have the mental health services available for these folks to get them the help they need. Um, and again, this is a situation where often um, there are early warning signs, and I just say to folks, when you have friends, acquaintances, family that start to exhibit behaviors that might be leading to a tragic decision on their part, to, to help them get help. Um, a lot of Western states in the United States have been uh, legalizing marijuana, even though it's not legal at the federal level. Um, do you see any future in legalization of marijuana at the state level in Montana? Uh, well, that would be a question for the state legislature. Uh, I do know that uh, THC has positive medicinal value. Uh, so I'm supportive of medicinal uh, THC, the, the active component of marijuana, particularly for people with chronic pain. Uh, but like any other drug, I think it, it needs to be uh, under the care of a doctor uh, and dispensed by a pharmacist. I think that's the best way to make sure we have positive outcomes and not negative outcomes. Gotcha. Um, uh, these last two questions are kind of more fun questions, but what advice would you give your high school self where you are today? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, I was awfully serious back in high school. I had, uh, uh, this may sound odd, but I, I love, and I created a career out of starting and growing businesses. I started my first business in junior high school. Uh, it was not glamorous, but it was fun. I, uh, I mowed lawns. And then by the time I got to high school, I bought a, a small Radio Shack computer and started writing software for people. And I love entrepreneurship. And that's one of the things I talk about. I don't, as I visit high schools around the state, this is more advice for high school students than it is maybe back to myself, but um, I don't think uh, enough people are considering uh, entrepreneurship as a career path. Um, and I, when I do entrepreneurial seminars in high schools, I ask the question, how many of you have ever thought of starting your own business? And very few hands go up. That's why uh, I give a copy of my book to anybody that wants it free of charge. I got to Bozeman uh, just before the internet did, so I have the domain name. Uh, my personal website is bozeman.com, and if there's anybody listening to this uh, recording, 
that has any interest in starting a business. If you go to bozeman.com and you live in Montana and you request a copy of my book, Bootstrapping Your Business, I'm happy to send you a copy free of charge. Good to know. <laughs> um, and then the last question is, um, so last week at our high school, we had a um, like sort of like a male beauty pageant contest and everybody uh -huh. had like their own talents. Um, what would your talent have been if you were in that contest? <laughs> At my talent, well, it would not have been singing. It would not have been dancing. Um, I like to tell jokes, so I might tell a joke. You want to hear a joke? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I travel around the state a lot, and I was going through a small town in eastern Montana, and two guys went into business with each other, and I was kind of surprised. The veterinarian went into business with the taxidermist. That was kind of odd, because the sign in front said, veterinarian and taxidermy services. You know what it said underneath? What? No matter what happens, you're getting your dog back. <laughs> I like that. Buddy, it's nice talking with you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs>